when you were at your best, your strongest, I think you would have been a monster. I destroyed you, Brian. Okay. I would have absolutely De- dom- dominated. Destroyed me. Dominated. Destroyed me. Destroyed. You think? Yeah. That'd be my trophy. Would it, would it be your trophy? <laughs> I'm just saying. Welcome to the Shaw Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Shaw, and today I'm joined by none other than Mr. Edward Hall, back in Colorado, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm happy to see you. Am I happy to see you? You're always happy to see me, Brian. Always, always happy to I see you. Pretend you're not. Yeah. You're looking good. Thanks, man. Yeah, you're looking, you're looking good. You're looking good. Yeah. It's been, uh, been fun having Eddie out uh, for the Shaw Classic Weekend. I guess you kind of partook in in quite a bit, man. Yeah, quite a bit. It was fun. It was fun. It's been good. It's been good to come and see what you've been doing for the last three, four years. Yeah, it's been it's been insane. It's good. It's honestly been insane, man. This uh, this weekend, I, I feel like I'm still kind of coming down off of the high. You know, I mean, you know how that is with yeah, the, yeah, yeah. like building up to any big contest, but you know, you promoted shows as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in the UK, you did the team show for quite a while over there. What, three years, three, four years? Was that? Oh, I think the last one we did was 2016. We did it for three, four years, yeah. Did that Did that take a lot out of you? Oh, massive. Yeah. yeah. You, I remember uh, you being pretty stressed it's out with that. It's very stressful. I mean, I had yeah. a business partner that was the laziest person on planet Earth. So, uh, you know, Even lazier than you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, organizing, running around, selling tickets, organizing seats, organizing staff, organizing clothing, trophies, prize money, flights, hotels. And when you've got all that going on and then people are like coming in late with the flights and people aren't turning up and people are getting injuries and you've got to replace them. And it is the most stressful like time of my life. So I can fully appreciate when you've got a very good team around you to sort of take a lot off you, but it's yeah. still... Like you have to be hands on and make sure everything's the way you want it. Yeah, I mean, you stressful. you made a comment. I think when was that? Probably Friday, <clears throat> Friday night before we started. I, I think you were sitting there and we were kind of having a meeting about the equipment or something. I was going through my notebook of details mm-hmm. before, with the guys, and we got done with the meeting. And, and I think you said something something along the lines of like, "You're way too hands on." That's isn't that what you said to me? I did. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was like you need to go back to the hotel and get rested and get food in you and get to sleep. Yeah. And you were like, it was like nine, nearly ten o'clock at night, and you're sat there still going over the rules with the staff and you know all your helpers and volunteers yeah. And, yeah. and all the other athletes were back in the hotel relaxing and getting ready for the contest. And you're you're mind boggling yourself. And I'm like, Brian, you need yeah. to get gone, man. I was. That was kind of my, uh, I think my my kind of switch off time there. You know, but it just, truth be told, things don't work out well if you aren't hands-on, I don't think, you know, and, and especially, you know, uh, going into something like this, you have you have to have that detail, mm-hmm. you have to have that detail, and then then you bring all the great people into the mix, which which there was a number of different people, you know, that, that played a huge role uh, this weekend and made things uh, run the way they did you know the 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 everybody from the um you know the the commentators the mcs the referees the equipment people you know the mm. expediters everybody helping on the backside with the expo and um you know from a media standpoint i mean there's there's just so many moving parts to to a big weekend just as you alluded to at the beginning of this when you were saying you know hey and then on top of that it's the flights right yeah, and yeah. and i got really lucky you know this weekend other than um you know dealing with uh you know we, we did have two people pull out with uh you know pavlo nakanechki and pavlo kordiaka so they pulled out so there was a little bit i had to deal with there mm. but other than that knock on wood man everything kind of ran on time i was i was waiting for those to come in it was like oh this is delayed and this is canceled or you know and I, we've had to do that in the past but i got really lucky with that side of it so you know other than uh, the stress of all the equipment kind of coming down to the last minute that was uh-huh. super stressful uh for me and and um you know i was really trying to do my best i think to to keep that away from anybody else you know and, and then i know on the backside, like carrie what she was dealing with and you know some of the um other issues 
she purposely didn't tell me because she didn't want me to know about it and stress about it because I would, mm-hmm. of course. So I think there's a lot of that kind of going around with a, um, you know, big contest like this. But man, the, the response, I tell you what, man, the response has been incredible, you know, and, and I think that that's really, you know, after all of the, you know, m- months and months and months of buildup to get to it and to have such a great response from everybody involved, you know, and, and, um, you know, even for you, man, turning up to, to support mainly, uh-huh. which is what you did was huge, man. And I, I like, it, it was, um, it was special, bro. Like having, having you having a lot of the, you know, people that have, um, you know, been a part of my life, a part of my career, like all that to be around, uh, the weekend was, was huge, man. So I have to thank you for that, um, for coming out because it, uh, it meant a lot to me. Good. It's a pleasure to come out and See your very last contest, I think. Last know, one, yeah. It was, I mean, the one before was Worlds, and yep. you know, whatever stars were aligned, that didn't happen. Yep. Uh, for the way you wanted it, and, and it felt really gutted for you, mate, because there's a great saying, and in, in, in especially with athletes, you're only as good as your last performance. And to go out on a on a low like that, I can imagine how soul destroying that was for you, and I and. Uh, I can see why you decided to go as, as, you know, enter this and do this as your last contest. And you've gone out on a massive high, man. The response was insane. The crowd was insane. The online response you've had has been absolutely insane. And, you know, you've created this brand that will go on for years and years to come. And that is worth more than any Will Strongest Man title or any title you can think of. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to have that, man, it's... You're very blessed. I know. Yeah, I, you say blessed. You you worked hard for it. Yeah, it's you bring you bring up an interesting point, and I I think going out uh, on top is big, right? You know, and especially you know with a career like I have had, I think that's that's kind of I'd be lying if if I didn't say that that I I thought about going out on top. Like you want to have that moment where it's like, oh, you're on top. You kind of call it there. You call your shot. And then you and then you walk away. You know, yeah. it, it, it was um, something that that I, I very much wanted to have. And like you said, you know, things didn't play out. Um, you know, with World's Strongest Man, the way that I had envisioned. And uh, you know, going into that contest, I did feel like I was in really good shape. And you know, the way that it worked out with the the stone off, and you know, some of the things that happened there, just it just didn't come to to um come to life the way that i thought it would yeah. you know and um that happens that's that's competition that's athletic competition and uh um you know going into this one i i knew i was in shape at world's strongest man i um was able to go back to the drawing board and and from a, a preparation standpoint for myself i changed a few things going into this um that i i don't know if people realize I actually changed my training time for the first time in my life. Time is in the time of day. Yeah, time of day. Right. So I was uh, um, able to identify early on that I that just the stress of of my day leading up. There are so many moving parts that I had to deal with that by the end of the day, which I typically had trained in the evening, yeah. afternoon, or evening, I was getting to a point where mentally I couldn't put everything into it that I wanted to. And so I said, right, I have to change this up, uh, going in. So I actually would get up in the morning, kind of have my morning routine eat. And then from there go train. And so I was training first thing, but I was able to attack it without the other parts of my day taking away from it. Yeah. 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 And so I just, I said, I have to do this. This is something I feel like I have to do. And I did it for a week and I liked it, did it for another week. I really liked it. And so I just kept rolling like that. And I think it, it really helped me, to put everything in to my training, you know, mm. and I, I really did take it all in as it was coming. But I, I really said to myself, this is the last day, each one of the days of training. It's the last day that I have to get better yeah. on today. And this is my last contest. So if I don't prioritize my training the way that I need to, mm. I'm not going to get as much out of it as I, sh- I should. And so I did that. I bumped my eating up. Um, so I actually came in heavier to this than I have in, yeah. in a long time, you know, cause I was always trying to, I don't want to say cut down, but restrict, you know, restrict. And, and I think that, you know, you would probably agree with this when I'm at my best, I'm bigger, 
Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm stronger, I'm bigger. The bigger the weights are, the better I do. Yep. You know, that's typically been me. And so the the mold that I was trying to kind of force myself into with, you know, cutting down and, and coming in, you know, maybe a little bit leaner, a little bit lighter, this type of thing. It just wasn't, it, it just never really clicked for me. Yeah. Like, And I would say that's probably the last, you know, gosh, four or five years probably where things have kind of, you know, required that like where it's it's like okay there's more speed involved there's more time involved there's you know like that type of thing so it was neat to obviously have the the contest formatted the way it was with the bigger weights the heavier events Mm. i said i i have to come in bigger and so we get to open the gates and just kind of go and i said i'm gonna eat the way i kind of have in the past for the bigger contests and I'm going to prepare for the big weights and come in ready to go. And I think that, that, you know, that in combination with changing the training time and identifying that Mm. it made a big difference, you know, for me. And, and, um, you know, obviously there was, there was a lot of outside stress, like we just alluded to with, you know, putting the contest on and, and that type of thing, which certainly makes it, um, tough. It does make it tough to perform, but, I was I was just riding high, and I think the energy of the crowd, the energy of the weekend, um, and the guys, man. I I I said to them uh, in in the um, it was kind of like the VIP meet and greet. You know, somebody kind of asked about my last time and, and that type of thing, and I I just said like, you know, me being the competitor that I am, I wanted all of them to bring their best. I wanted to bring my best, and and you know, kind of have that stage set where you know, they're going to push me, I'm going to push them. And I love that. I've always thrived on that. I love that. And, and, uh, you know, I think that, um, it's a special thing, um, you know, to be able to perform against, against these guys that are at the top of their game and they all came in, you really ready to rock and roll, which excited me. I love the priority that, that so many of these guys were putting onto their performance or training. And, and, um, you know, I know that, that so many of them, so many of the guys here, um, are, just scratching the surface of what their possible their possibilities are within within the sport and so it was neat to have them come to be a part of it um and uh to be able to compete against them you know what i'm saying and uh it was fun man i i um i want to get your thoughts though like what were what were your thoughts on the the contest the format the weekend um being a part of it because obviously you haven't been here for the first three this was the the first one you came to i loved the, the the format um come back to that but you know the the attention to detail and everything you know from the expo from the giving back to the fans giving that it's a crowd experience and i think that's what you captured perfectly is that yes to us it's a sport to us it's the world Mm. but we've got to remember that strongman is was and always will be probably an entertainment sport like people want to watch big men lift big weights and the format delivered that um you know i think back to when i was at my prime you know 2016 2017 i would have loved this contest hands down and you always get the 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 sort of bullshit of you you, you get bullshit events you know that you get bullshit events in all contests and and the fans get drawn into that bullshit of like to me being the world's strongest man isn't who can run the fastest or be the fittest or you know i know you had a throwing event but to me it's like throwing a, a keg in the air for the highest or the fastest time to me that's not strength that is not strength strength to me and the the the, the definition of the strongest man on the planet is someone who can move the most weight from A to B. And that's exactly what you did. I think seven out of the eight events were basically move weight as fast or as hard as you can from A to B. And that is, it's something that you've grasped. And I think a lot of people uh, 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 have lost the the sort of, that relation with strongman. They need to get back to that a little bit more. They really do. And I think what you're doing is fantastic. I think you, you're separating yourself massively from other competitions, and it's a really good thing. You're doing it. You're doing it to find out who the strongest is, and you're not giving a shit about how it looks per se. You know, like pulling planes or buses or 
running on sand or all that shit. You don't give a fuck how it looks, you know. You 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 you're finding out who the strongest is, and I think that's super super important. Well, I think objectively objectively talking, and and you know within the sport, obviously, strongman is unique, where it is not let's just say powerlifting, right? Like powerlifting, you go, go into powerlifting, you know it's going to be the type of bar. You ha- you're going to have your calibrated weights and it's going to be a squat, a bench, and a deadlift. That's it, Yeah. right? Strongman contests are always going to change, right? Yes. You're, you're not necessarily going to have the exact same events, the exact same weight. So you, you, know, you need to be good at maximum lifts. You need to be good with uh, heavy repetitions, and I'd say heavy because it should be heavy mm. repetitions. Uh, so, you know, these things, taking a step back, it does need to be a show, right? And and that's something that I think is very important. It needs to be a show. It needs to be a spectacle yes. of strength, right? But within that spectacle, it still needs to be heavy enough to separate out the strongest, yeah, right? And that's, I think what is so difficult to do that is so incredibly difficult to do at the top level uh, within the sport of strongman because the guys are, are strong, yeah. right? So to pick, to be able to have the ability, and this is what I stress about so much going into an event like this, picking the weights, are they the right weights? And it's, it's extremely difficult to set up and run events where you're able to pick the right weights Mm -hmm. and you know within within the events coming in the top weights you you only want a few of the competitors to be able to finish yes or do the top weights and you know i'm gonna have to go through each event and kind of break down like who was able to finish who was not able to finish but you know in most i would say in most of the events and you bring up the throwing event but even that we made heavier yeah right so i think only three maybe three or four out of 14 were able to finish all eight of the bags so it's still not a it's so light everybody's going to finish type of thing Mm -hmm. it's all about speed it's it's still okay are you strong enough to throw the bag um over and and you have to finish so you can't just be explosive and fast to get a few over and then you can't finish you know so i think that that's the that's the challenge man and that's what's so hard on the backside that a lot of people don't realize, you know, and, and um, you know, I knew use the example explaining this to a couple people, you know, if, if you look at other sports, like for example, basketball, you have a basketball, well, the basketball is the same size and the same weight, and you have a rim that's always gonna be 10 feet, the court is always gonna be the same length and size. So then you just get referees and you play the game of basketball. Same thing with football, same thing with soccer, yeah. or, or you know, however, or rugby, or whatever you wanna use as an example. Mm-hmm. Um, but within Strongman, to set up the events, especially if you're gonna have a different event, now the weights have to be correct, right? Yeah. And that's what so many people don't understand about, you know, running a top mm-hmm. level Strongman contest you have to pick the right weights and you have to be smart enough to pick the right weights, but then you also have to test to make sure the weights are correct, mm-hmm. right? And, and you're gonna have that separation and, and, and you're going in and saying, you know, as a fan, my goal would be somebody coming to watch the contest. And I would think, I think this got accomplished this past weekend. Somebody that doesn't know anything, right? They could watch the event and they could say, by watching that event, that man is stronger than that man. Yes. Not, oh, did it come down to a stopwatch click and you were just a little bit faster, but I don't know if you were stronger, but you won based on we have to check the time real quick, right? Yeah. But it's it's objectively speaking, if you can watch and, for example, somebody could lift a bigger log, well, they're obviously stronger because they lifted a bigger log, log or deadlift or whatever. Like you can lift yeah. more weight. Well, guess what? You're stronger. Yeah. You know. So it's not it's not something that even – even a person that's not experienced can understand. They can understand that because objectively they can look at it and see, you know? Yeah. So I think that that's, I think that's important when you're talking about strength and you're saying, you know, and you've used this example with the deadlift, it's moving a heavy weight from point A to point B. Yeah. Right. Can you do it or can you not? But it's, it's, again, you get your rights. The relatability of you've used Hummer tires. Yeah. Most people know how heavy tires a wheel and tire it are you know yeah. they're heavy yeah and to lift three four aside 
is, uh, you know, a lot of people can't even comprehend that. A lot of people can't lift up a single tire. Right. Barely. Or mo- moving it around, rolling it yeah, around. Yeah, just rolling yeah. it about, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a spectacle, and that I mean that's that's one of the events. But you know, again, I think with with a, with a strongman contest, and this is why, this is why I've I've made the decisions to spend so much money on the equipment mm-hmm. and the design and 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 the visual aspect, yep. because it needs to be that show, right? And and you have to invest into equipment to make it that show and i'll continue to do that and you and you have to bring new ideas yep. uh that are innovative and and um and fun yeah. right the fans love watching and if and if you regurgitate the same events and do the same thing you know i think that that um that then it i don't want to say it gets boring but in a way it kind of gets boring if you're you're using the same stuff all the all the time yeah no you know you are right and uh it, it is a fight for the entertainment like aspect of it you know like will strongest man you know they they they, i mean they do a pretty good job in a lot of ways of like the bus pulls you know but as you say sometimes it's like that like three seconds can separate first and seventh which i think they've got the aspect right but maybe you should put it uphill you know and this you know and just separate the boys from the men sort of thing um and that you know like you've done a great job with like the bench press the deadlift um, you know, some some things people don't understand, like throwing the sandbags. People don't probably have a clue, but sure. they can see. You guys can appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a real tough, real tough thing to get right. Really, it is real it's, tough. It's it's really tough, and I mean, I think that that's on on the backside. Uh, you know, we tried to show a little bit going in this year uh, because of how busy I was as far as the video content. I said, hey, let's just kind of. Let's just kind of do a weekly behind the scenes of all this stuff that's going on. So I think that people got a little bit of a sense of how hard it is to test some of those things. And I mean, to get it right, um, like you bring up, you bring up a pole, for example, like some type of truck pole, bus pole, plane pole. Mm. That is, that is incredibly difficult to get right. Oh, yeah. Incredibly difficult because you need to test and test and test. And then on top of that, you need to care. And I would say, that there have been there have been polls that I have been involved in that have been not good because they're they're too easy. But I've also been involved in yes. polls that were perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that were that, perfect. That, that's a big problem. Like I say, Will Strongest Man. It's uh, like like sometimes the poll, as you say, the polls in the past have been amazing. But sometimes yeah. they're just stuck. You know, they've got yeah. a vehicle, they've got a space. Yeah. What can you do? Yeah. You know, let the tires down. It's like sometimes you just you have to work with what you've got. Yeah. Um. So it's it's tough, man. I say, yeah. remember, was it seventeen where we pulled that plane, plane pull? Yeah, we pulled a plane. That was one of the most visually best what, what pulls you, I've ever done, and also the one probably one of the fairest because yeah. it was just it was raw. It didn't go. You know, you had to fucking pull it. Yeah. Well, what would you what would you say if you had to pick a year that you were involved in was the best pull, the the best one? Oh. Well, I'm gonna let me tell you the worst one first. It was it, uh, I think it was 13 in Sanya where they did the bus pull in the heats. Oh boy! And the brakes <laughs> kept getting caught. Yeah. Right, that was horrible. And, yeah. and again, not. I mean, Gregor Edmonds does the kit, but not his fault at all. But he's just given a vehicle with malfunctions, you mm. know. But you know, when he's given a, a space to do it on, what else can he do? Yeah. Um, but then you've got instances. I, I mean, I'm biased, but that year where we pulled that Hercules plane in Botswana. Mm-hmm. In 2017, for me, that was just the most visually and probably one of the most uh, p- performance reliant I've ever seen. Like, because actually, tell a lie, mate, because there was one truck pull, oh, Malaysia. Yep. And you were the only one to finish? No. So you're, you're, that was the one I was going to pick. I, th- 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 it's just come up in my, in my yeah, head, yeah. actually. And, and, and that was a very, say, it was done perfectly. Yeah. Like you, so had, I got. I you, actually, I didn't finish, but I was the close. I was. You were the very closest close. to the end. But, that's how it should be. But everybody was separated out. Yeah, yeah. You know, by by a little bit of of uh, space. Yeah. You know, but but it was like it took everything out of you. Yes. Right, and and it was a very grueling, hard event. But yeah. I mean, so that example, you know, and and I've gone to do a bunch of different polls, and and um, 
you know, this is something that it's, it's, uh, it's very reliant on testing. Yeah. That's what I would say. And I think that, you know, I could do, I could have done the same thing with some of the events we had here. And if they were not tested the way that they were tested, they wouldn't have come out the same way because mm. you picked the wrong weight. So even for example, like we, you know, we bring in the, you know, the standing chest press, I lost so much sleep over what weights to choose mm. and how, what is possible. Cause you got, you got a group of strong guys and, and I've, I've always thought yourself being an example of this, very uh, strong guys in, in strongman can bench a lot, yeah. right? And so I thought coming in, okay, if you pick a weight that's too light, you get to the end and everybody's just repping it out. Now you have a problem yeah. and it, it doesn't have the effect that you want, yeah. right? So to pick the right weights and dial it in is not easy. But if you if you truly care about it and are willing to put the time in, you can make it better. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's just with anything, with anything in strongman, but you, you, you know, from a contest promotion standpoint, you have to be willing to, uh, number one, put the time and effort and money into it. Mm. And then, then, um, you know, also on the backside, spend the time to get it dialed in and get it right. Mm. So I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that. And, and, you know, you bring up you competing in this contest when you were at your best, your strongest. I think you would have been a monster. I destroyed you, Brian. Okay. I would have absolutely De dom dominated. Destroyed me. Dominated. Destroyed me. Destroyed. You think? Yeah. That'd be my trophy. Would it, would it be your trophy? <laughs> Just saying. I mean, it's a very bold, confident statement, you know? There's no doubt in my mind. Sorry. No doubt? No doubt. No doubt. I like how competitive you are, and, and you're saying that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Not now. Not, not now, no. No, not but now, no, no. but like... Prime, Prime Eddie Hall. That, prime, that, prime Eddie. That contest at the weekend, man, oh. Yeah. Yeah, would have loved it. Yeah. Loved it, yeah. It's a, a bold statement to say that you would, mm -hmm. you would, you would crush me. Crush. Adam. Yeah. Crush. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you continue thinking that because mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want to, like, like, hurt your feelings or anything. Okay. So let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> we I, can... I'd have won. Oh, okay. Let's move on. Okay. Brian yeah. admitted it. Let's go. Did I? Did I, 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 I just, I, I mean, here's the thing is I'm not, I'm not going to be mean to you, you know, I mean, maybe. Well, uh, I've already said fine, Brian. Let's move on. Yep. Very good. Very good. Yep. So talking about fitting, we'll change gears. We'll change gear. I think everybody <laughs> can read into what was said there. Um, we'll change gears. So finishing up a strongman career at mm -hmm. the top level, right? And I think this is something that was actually the reason for us sitting down and talking is you and I were kind of having this conversation about, about how to deal with that, right? And I think I've got my ideas, but obviously this is a very fresh thing for me now where I definitely called my shot, put it out there publicly. Everybody was well aware of what my plans were for this year to go, um, you know, and compete uh, here as, as my last one. Yep. Right. And, and, you know, everybody in attendance, everybody that watched, you know, was very well, well aware of that. And, and, you know, it was, it was a situation where going into it, obviously I wanted the outcome that happened. I, I, that's what I prepared so hard for and wanted, but also I was prepared to walk away no matter what. It wasn't like, Oh, I, you know, lost by one point. Now I'm coming back. I'm going to, you know, so I was, I was at peace with making that decision and, and willing to kind of step back and take it all in. But now that it's done on the backside, I'm not going to lie. It's going to, it's going to be weird, man. It's going to be a little bit weird for me. Um, you know, with, uh, you know, strongman contests coming up where I'm not competing in them mm -hmm. because I basically have gone, I mean, man, since I started in, in 2005, it's always been what's next. Yeah. Always. Mm -hmm. Right there, were, and I didn't, what you know, context? some and what, some what context, yeah, yeah and yeah. some some guys, uh, even within the sport, have taken a break, so to speak, yeah. from competing. Or hey, I'm going to have some time off, or I'm going to do this or that. Not for me. I haven't. I have not had that. It's always been consistent. Okay, let's set the goals. Let's work on what's next. I'm gonna I'm gonna work towards what what's next. Even if I choose to have some more time between contests. Um, it's not taking a break. It's just the fact that I wanted to work and prep for, um, and I was obviously very strategic with, um, 
what contests I did and how often I competed and that type of thing, which, you know, was all done on purpose mm. uh, for sure. But it's it, 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 not talking about that, but going away, what was it like for you when you said, Hey, I'm done? Like, what did you go, what did you go through? I mean, from a maybe mental standpoint, physical standpoint, mm. um, you know, just overall life, like what, cause you know, you were obviously so super hyper-focused on what you wanted to achieve. You put everything into it, you know, very much like me. It's like yeah. you, you go hard and you know how to go hard and you know how to put in hard work. So what, what was that like when you, when you stepped away? So, I mean, for me, I, I wanted to win the world's strongest man once. And that was my, that was my goal, my target. And you said that. I said that publicly yeah. before I'd won it. You know, I said I was going to win it and retire. Yeah. Very public about that. And, uh, I guess a bit like what you've just said there on, on your contest, like whether I came second, third, fourth, you know, this was my last contest, you know, it would have to have been. Um, and in all honesty, I had, I, I had the same mindset, but I also think to myself, if I had a come second, I mm. probably would have gone again. Yeah. Well, you wanted to win. Yeah. You're saying you wanted to win. So you, you said, okay, yes, I'm going in. But yeah, but I, I think you would have, I think you would have come back if you didn't win. I, I think I would have. But um, there was a lot going on behind the scenes with me, you know, a mm. lot of health issues and mental issues as well, you know, putting your, my marriage was on the rocks because I was so obsessed with strong man. So there was a lot on the line. My marriage was on the line. Yeah. You know, and you know, the, the mother of my children. Was, yeah. It was, it was on the line. So there was a lot at stake for me. There really was a lot at stake. And when, you know, you win that title and you, it's sort of like, all came back at once you know my marriage like repaired itself after geez uh what would that be how many four years five years just like an instant repair to the marriage because i'd worn in like all this time was back i began to see my kids for the first time you know literally i didn't spend any time with my kids yeah. at all so you know rebuilding that um and then it was like this whirlwind of endorsements and sponsorships and TV shows and evening webs and, and whatever else. So I had a lot to keep my mind busy, but it was really tough not having a target, really hard. And it's it's been well documented that, you know, Olympic gold medalists and world champions and whoever else, you know, the top of the top of the tier athletes, they achieve the greatness, like they become the best of, of their sport, best in the world. And then the next day, they've got to go home, do the dishes, change nappies. Right. And I think that was a, a real harsh realization for myself as a one will strongest man. And, you know, you get back to the hotel and you have to sit down and take a shit like everybody else. <laughs> you know, that's it's hard. It's, you think it's all going to change and it doesn't. Well, I mean, you're, you're, I don't think you're, I don't think you're going to do that standing up. No, you but know? you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Nothing changes really. Um, yeah. and, and nothing will change for you in yeah. that aspect, you know, nothing, you know, nothing new is going to pop up. You've, you've done, you've built your career. Now you've got to ride that wave off the back of it. Um, and that took me a long time to sort of build that and get that going. You know, I built the beast brand up from, from nothing to something that is just huge now. Yeah. Huge. And that, I suppose that's, that's kept me going in a way. Um, and I've also I did the the fight with four, and that kept me good for a couple of years. Whilst whilst the the pandemic hit us, yeah, that, that sort of kept me me head down. Um, and then after that, it's like I had nine months of just doing nothing, yeah, because I was just so deflated. You know, I was like, I, I went from world strongest man to doing the fight with four, and it was just like, why? Well, I just felt defeated, man. Sure, like what next? And there was nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. So. You know, I, I worked worked very hard on uh, uh, having another child. Yeah. It was like so I needed something in my life, so that was like a little target for for me and my wife to sort of right. Let's let's go all in with this, and we're doing all the all the potions and whatever else to make that happen. Uh, and we actually ended up we, we we paid for IVF, and then just before we were about to start IVF, she was pregnant. That's awesome. So it just you know the. That was magic, man. It's like yeah, and now, and now you have 
have uh, your new baby too. Yeah. So it's it's a, that's kind of something to focus on as well. Massive, right? massive. Now that you, now that that's part of your life and yeah, and that's brought a massive leaf of happiness into yeah. into our lives. Massive. Um, and now it's again like chasing something else. And me and you have been discussing things of what we could do together. Yeah. In the future, which might come to fruition. Yeah. At some point, but. You know, I've had something land on my, under my nose the last few weeks that is insane that you know about. Yeah. And it's just one of these opportunities that you have to grab with both hands and yeah, and go for. And it's life changing. Yeah. And and that, you know, that'll keep me good for another six months. And then after that, I don't know, maybe there's a bit more added to that event. But um I guess what I'm saying is you need a target. Yeah. You know, like when I finished with the fight with four and I didn't have anything, you know you're sort of on the back of, of, of the pandemic and, you know, my YouTube dropped and like my social media dropped, everything was just rock bottom and you just, I just felt so lost. And that was the, that's the worst time to be, man, when you've got no target and you're just a bit, you know, you get, I mean, you saw me, man, I was well out of shape, just sat around doing, you know, playing video games and all that crap. And yeah, it's hard. You need people like me and you need targets to keep us moving forward to, to keep that positive mindset. And if you haven't, that's when you turn into a fat piece of shit like I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the thing, the thing that's interesting with, with your journey, and you said it yourself, it's kind of like you build up, build up, build up. And then, you know, as, as I want that one, one world's strongest man win, I want that one. And then from there, it was like done, you know, and, and, and I remember vividly, like you got done, with the contest and I um, uh, rode back in, in the truck uh, with you and you're like, that's it. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, remember, I, I remember that conversation. We went for a steak. Yeah. And you were just like, that's it. Yeah. And I like, it, it was so shocking. I think for me at that time to hear that, because obviously that's not how I mm. thought it was like, like, I remember like after I won my first one, it was like, okay, well, what's I'm going to get back and get to work and we're going to go do this and that. You know, and you kind of feel like you're on top of the world, but you want to stay on top of the world. And mm -hmm. I think, obviously, there was a lot of stuff going on, like you mentioned, behind the scenes that kind of, you know, you were dealing with that maybe I didn't even realize at the time, like what you were going through and where you were at. And I think that mentally, it's kind of like, okay, well, that weight's off my back. I'm good. Yeah. And now I have to go work on fixing these other things that are going on. And so, you know, I think the, the whirlwind that you got on the back end, especially, um, you know, being the, the first winner from the UK for how long, yeah. you know, I think that that, that definitely sustains you for a while. You know, that, that pickup, like you said, and the opportunities, uh, excuse me. And then from there, you kind of have these waves and then you, you've got into these different things that have sustained your competitiveness mm. and you've gotten into and been able to work through. And I think for me, it's, it's going to be interesting because obviously I've I've stayed in the, in in the sport of strongman a lot longer, and obviously had you know different wins and accomplishments and whatever, and I've I've ridden those different waves like multiple times, mm. you know. So it's kind of like coming out of the back end of it. Um, I've I've got a lot of other things that I already have started that I can be competitive in. Like when it comes to a business standpoint, yeah, yeah, and I think that, like in my mind, some of that I have kind of, I don't want to say put on the back burner, but in a way I have had to, where I can't go a hundred percent all in with it. I just haven't been able to because it's always yeah, like, yeah. well, I still have to train, I still have to eat, I still have to recover, so I can only dip my toes into certain things so much before it's like, hey, that's going to now d take away from what I'm trying to do from an athletic performance standpoint. Right? Yeah. And so that's, th that's been, been hard for me because there have been times where it's like, all right, I want to push a little bit harder on this or that. And I can't really do that. So I have to come back. And, you know, I think that I've tried to walk that line, obviously with, um, you know, with, with Carrie, with the boys, um, you know, still trying to stay as involved as I possibly could, but even, even still like they're starting to get older now. Um, to the point that they're playing sports and and that type of thing. And even, you know, in this build up to this one, there were certain things where, you know, Braxton would have a soccer game or something and I could not go because I had to train. And that was a very hard choice for me 
Um, if I could go, I would, but there were certain times where I simply could not. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's a hard thing. And, and, um, you know, with them being younger, that was really never a part of the equation. I, I wasn't missing anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And I feel like now, you know, especially maybe in this last year or two, I have had to miss things, which is not fun for me. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. It's not a, a good feeling, um, to, to have to be like, well, I'm going to miss, but I tried to channel it into a way where I was working harder. I was like, all right, I'm going to make this sacrifice now mm. to be better. Uh, and, and in turn, it's going to come back. And now I want to be able to kind of shift gears and, and in a way be, be competitive with my boys too. Yeah. Right. And help them to be competitive. And I think that that's going to channel some things for me, but personally speaking, I think it's going to be very important for me to also remain competitive in, in something, mm-hmm. right? Cause I just don't, I don't thrive on not being competitive. I yeah. don't. And, and you know that about me. It's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll pick something different. Obviously you and I've talked about different things and I've thought about different things as well. And, and I think that it's now an open door. The way that I see it is, it's kind of like, okay, one chapter is closed right? Like I closed that one chapter and, you know, people have asked me about, oh, well now you could go, you know, compete in masters or something like that. You know, I have no, I I (laughs) just, and and gain what? Exactly. But I I have no desire. Yeah. I I mean, I don't get me wrong. I think it's, it's neat that they, they offer that to people and, and that type of thing. But like in my mind, I, I want to be at the top of the mountain. I want to be the best, yeah. right? So I want to compete against the best. I want the best competition, and, and that's that's what I've thrived on. Mm-hmm. So to step away from I'm competing against the absolute best in the world every time I compete. That's what I wanted, right? Mm-hmm. To go and compete now in a in a sub category, masters category. It's just that that would not drive me, no. it, it, and 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 it's very hard to explain. It's very hard to explain that to people, I think, that haven't been at the top, Mm. right? If you haven't been at the top, consistently at the top, and and not to say that there's guys that that haven't gone and competed in Masters that have been at the top, because there have been, but, you know, for me, it wouldn't fill my cup up, and I can't answer the question for them. I can't, Mm. right? But in no way, shape, or form right now, does that excite me at all, right? Like, I, I, I think it's, I'm happy to go out on top. I'm happy to go out, you know, with a win and close that chapter. And, and, and this chapter is complete of my life story, if you will, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Th- like, I'm good with that. And now we can open up this new chapter, write this new chapter with a bunch of other things that I could do. And I don't know exactly what those things will be, you know? Um, and I think that's okay to not know, but also... I have ambitions of doing a lot more versus like, Hey, I'm done competing. And that's all I have. That's all I ever was. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, for some athletes, depending on what they have planned after they're done competing, that can be really hard because if you put all your eggs in that basket and that's all that you have is that, that competing, nothing else is, is, is set up on the backside nothing and then that's taken away yeah right and especially even if they don't retire that this is even harder yeah you you don't you're forced to retire right so yes. you don't even call yeah. your shot it's like hey i i maybe you you sustained a bad injury mm. and now you're done and it's like one instant you're at the top or competing and then you're injured and now you're done yeah right yeah. and and it's that's that's i would feel like even harder because you don't have time to kind of say hey i'm going out on my yes. own terms you know, so it's what, what you have set up on the backside. And I think that's why you see even some of the best, like you said, the best of the best get done and their whole identity is them as an athlete competing. And that's what they've dedicate, dedicated their entire life to. Yes. And, and the, the, there are world's strongest man athletes that have won the world's strongest man and gone back to working full-time jobs. Yeah. They have many. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you've got to, you've done it, you've done things right, you know, and you, and you touch on your kids there. One of the best things that that's happened to me in the, in the, the, the last year or so is when my son, cause my son always, 
uh, sort of followed, you know, what I did and, and, and tried to understand it as best as I could. And he said, when I'm 10 years old, I'm going to come train with you, Dad. And after his, the day after his 10th birthday, we did a first training session together in the gym. And he trains with me every single day now. And it's one of the the best rewarding feelings in the world, being able to go to the gym with your son and work out and, you know, splash those endorphins out and and, and, and have fun. And, you know, we, we have a blast, man. We whip each other in the balls with towels and we're trolling <laughs> other people in the gym. And, but then at the same time, we're pushing each other really hard. Yeah. And that has been one of the most rewarding things of everything I've done in life is spending time with my son and having the opportunity to, because you say, Brian, you've, you've built this amazing sort of entity yeah. around you yep. off the back of what you've done. And you, you've got to capitalize on it now. And I know you are. And like you say, your competitive nature, just like myself, it's, your business doesn't just want to turn over, you know, a couple hundred grand a year. You want to turn over a hundred million a year. I know you do. And this is, you know, this is the sort of mindset you've got to have. Yeah. You know, you want to be the best in sport. Great. Done it. Dominated. Let's be the best in business. Sure. Let's be the best dad. Yeah. And these are the things that sort of fill that void. Well, in that time, I mean, you, you, that time with your son is, is limited too, right? Yeah. It just, it just is. And, and, you know, He's going to grow up quickly. I mean, I've I've watched my boys go from basically, you know, and, and I think every parent will probably say this, go overnight from, gosh, you're in diapers and not walking to now you, you're growing up so quickly and things go so fast, right? And so I think being able to take that time, like I've probably realized that more as the boys have kind of started their little sports and things that they're doing. And it's like, if I, if I don't, if I'm not involved heavily at this age, soon they're going to be, you know, they're going to be 12. They're going to be 14. They're going to be, they're going to be 18. They're going to be, you know, and, yeah. and I don't want that to go by and say, Hey, I should have been there. I should have done yeah. this. And I think that that's, that's a, a big part of this, man. It's a big mm -hmm. part of it. And I, I like, they'll come in the gym with me now. And, and it's, it's amazing to watch their creativity you know, with what they do and they'll, they'll grab, you know, grab little dumbbells or grab, you know, a uh, medicine ball or whatever. And they, they set up these little courses for themselves to do, and then they'll challenge each other nice. to go do it. Um, and you know, it, it's just, it's such a, um, like innocent thing that they're doing. But like, for me, I know that they're picking that up for me. I know they're picking it up from Carrie because they watch her too. And it, it's it's neat to to have them involved and to be involved in. So I can only imagine when they get to be a little bit older and they can actually, you know, get into training and, and that type of thing. And it's something where I think no matter what they ch they choose to do, I I would love for them to have that base where it's like, hey, I have I have working out as part of my life. Yeah. Right. So it's at least they are following. Uh, somehow in, in like my footsteps and Carrie's footsteps um, with, you know, kind of the foundation, so to speak, that we've given them. Yeah. Because no matter what happens in life, having that outlet from a training perspective is huge, yeah. right? And, and I think that, you know, the ups and downs and twists and turns and, and things that life will throw at you, because it will, and they, this is just natural. Like, there you know, it's 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 um, it's a false statement to say that, you're always on top of the mountain. Yes, you can have a positive outlook. I love to have a positive outlook and, and put that out to the world, but there's tough moments, man. Like you're gonna go up and down. And I'm sure with this, it's like, okay, you're being handed a trophy one day and the next day, like you said, you go back and it's it's this, you know, crash kind of mm. coming off of the high of all this energy. And I've had that happen multiple times, man, where it's like you're in the moment, you're at this, everybody is like, wow, 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 okay, cool. And then you come back and you're like, like you said, you're back to home and it's like, well, I'll throw in my laundry and, and yeah. do that. Change and, and the nappy and go shopping. Just and, back yeah, to yeah. normal. So I'm sure that that will come. But again, it's it's being able to, to, to find and channel that. And, and you know, if you can channel it into life, like you said, mm -hmm. like now with, with your baby and, and your son, I mean, all of these neat things, it's, it's great to be able to do that um, on the backside and, and um, you know, whether whether you're competing at a top level. And, and I feel like it's only, you know, we're sitting here having this conversation, but it wasn't that long ago where 
you know, I remember sitting talking to you in Australia where we were both kind of still like you're very much on that climb up and then I was like right in the mix as well Mm -hmm. and it's talking about what's going to happen in the future right and it's like okay well you walk into this you walk into that I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that it's just kind of evolved uh from there but it's it's that mindset and hunger and if you can uh, I would argue and you could say I would I would assume you would agree but if you can channel that type of hunger and focus that it takes to get to the top level um, in something like strongman, if you can channel that into other things, there's, there's very little doubt that you can be successful Mm. because of what it takes and the hard work and dedication. It's not something that you can just stumble into, right? Like you actually have to work incredibly hard to get to that level. So if you can channel that and use it, it it will only result in good things. Yeah, And we're both living proof of that. You know, we, I, I, I was a, I've said this, blow me on trumpet. I was a national champion swimmer when I was a kid. Yeah. And that mindset of being the best, I took over to weightlifting to strongman. And then since strongman, I've took that mindset into business, into social media, into YouTube, into TV shows, into, you know, protein companies and whatever else. So that mindset sticks with you forever. It's like, it's like people that come out of the army, you know, they're sort of, you have to be committed to be a Royal Marine or, you know, uh, and, and that's why people that come out of the army are always at the top of the list for jobs because they know the regimented, they know the truth to themselves. They yeah. know they're going to commit and get the job done. Yeah. So, and we're a bit like that. You know, we've come out of, we've just come out of the Royal Marines. Sure. You've just come out of the Royal Marines and now you've got that attitude, that Royal Marine attitude of put that into everything you do in life. Yeah. I, I met this one uh, business guy a long time ago and I remember he very much sought after athletes that at least had at least played at a college level to work for him yeah like if they had played at a high level that's a great and, attitude and yeah. and he said that that they're just better because they've been on essentially a team right yeah. the, the the um you know that that environment where it's like hey i'm i'm relying on you to do something to win this game you know and if you've been on a, especially a team sport too um where you've had to handle it, but then individual sports, I would argue be the same thing where it's yeah, like yeah. you have to handle your own business to get it done. So, but he, he would, um, you know, look, look toward hiring them. So he had a lot of like football players that had played at a very high level working for him, but he knew they were competitive. He knew they were mm-hmm. driven. He knew they were willing to be part of a team yeah, yeah, and they would, they would bring that same type of mindset and thrive on that where collectively they could win, yeah. you know, and it was, it was really interesting to hear that. But I think that mindset is such a, uh, a big part of it, a big part of, of life, right? And, and, and what you're willing to go and do. And, you know, I think that um, being able to separate yourself out is huge, mm-hmm. huge in so many different ways. And, and um, you know, it's not easy. And, you, you know, so many people, I think, um, tend to maybe look at other people that are successful and say, oh, it must be nice, right? It must be nice, must be great to have yeah, that yeah. fall into your lap or whatever. But, you know, I mean, your your childhood backstory, which we don't have to go into, my childhood backstory, which you don't have to go into, is coming from not very much, Yes, right? Yeah. And, and being so driven and so focused that over a long period of time, you're able to open doors and, and create a path, so to speak, mm. for your life, yeah. right? And and so many people could have come from those type of backgrounds or, or childhoods and not done anything, right? Yeah. And there, there are pe- a lot of people, the majority of people are like, well, I wasn't given this or I wasn't given that, so yeah, what am I going to be that, able to do? That resonates a lot, you know? Um, I, mean, I mean, you know my backstory, but... I always think there's a, my, my agent, he's, a, he's, a, he's from Pakistan, grew up in a, in a very poor village. And you'll find a lot of wealthy people are the Asian community. They come from a very poor background. And you think because they've come from that, because they've been through that struggle of not being able to put food on the table and a roof over their heads, that's why they're successful. Yeah. Because they've had to go through the shit. They know how desperately they want to avoid going back to that. So they'll work their arse off to move forward and, and build a better life. And yeah. I think me and you are very similar in that respect. You know, yeah. 
well, I, I had a very tough upbringing and and, the, and a horrible ad- adulthood of getting into full-time jobs and working 80 hours a week and killing myself. Sure. And the thought of going back to that makes me feel sick to the stomach. Yeah. Really so you'll, you'll work even harder because work of it. Twice as hard. Yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, I feel the same way because I, I always don't want to go backwards, right? Because I, I have been in that position where you have no money mm-hmm. and you're just like, well, I got to make this choice. I got to make that choice. And, um, you know, that, I think going through that, you build a different type of mental fortitude mm. to, to, to drive harder, right? And so it's almost, in a way, no, much, no matter how much success is there, I still feel like I'm, I'm so close to going back to yeah. where I was at the start that I don't want to go back there, yeah. right? And, and, you know, then... Never satisfied. Never, I'm the same. Yeah. And that's, that's something it's, it's, it's it, interesting. And now it's a little bit different conversation that we're having, but you know, then, then from a, like, if you look at, um, like generational wealth, mm. right. And I, I was something popped up, um, that I was listening to where, you know, this, this guy that, um, has been able to build like a, a massive, you know, company, you know, has different kids. And he was, he was like, you know, talking about how he's going to be able to transfer that to his kids, but then he wants it to stay in the family. Yeah. And then you know, look at like successful, he was talking about different families, like through history that like how many generations did the wealth stay in the family before it's gone? Yeah. Because at a certain point, if you don't go through this hard stuff that we're talking about, yeah. are you that driven Right, so if it's just handed to you, yeah, and this is a this is a hard thing, you know. I've I've got kids that have got everything, yeah, you know, and uh, I'll never forget my son came to me one day crying and uh, playing his online gaming, and one of his mates called him a spoilt little shit, and he was burst into tears. He's only young, sort of seven, eight, and he's like, "Call me a spoilt little shit," and I'm like, "Yeah, you fuck, you are." Yeah, and he's like, "What?" I'm like, "Mate, look at look at around you." Look what you've got. You've got a PlayStation, you've got an Xbox, you've got a 30 grand gaming PC. How how are you not a spoiled little shit? You are a spoiled little shit. And, you know, I really had to drive it into him. It's like, mate, you've got to realize, like, you can't show these things off. You can't be big-headed. Yeah. And you've got to work. Like, I make him work for his money. He has to, he has to do all his training sessions. He has to do all his homework. And he has to clean his room to get £10 a week. Yeah. And I put that in his bank. And he's not allowed to touch it. Yeah, And if he wants something, he has to save up £10 a week. And I think, you know, as they grow up, you've got to do things that make them realise the value of a, a dollar or a pound. Yeah. Because if you give them everything, that like that guy's saying, you, you, they get ruined. Yeah. You know, they get this entitlement of, I've got millions in the bank, I don't need to work. Like, my son's going to work. Yeah. He's going to go and work at McDonald's. He's going to go and work the, the paper rounds. He's going to fucking work. I'm going to make sure of that. Yeah. I mean, that's super, super important because it could go the complete... The, you've all been there. I've been at school where the kids got everything, yeah. you know? And they've, you know, they, they turn 16 and the mum and dad buy them a brand new car. Brand, sure, yeah. And you've, I've been there and seen it and everyone hates that fucking kid. Yeah, yeah. They fucking hate that kid. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, that, could, that kid grows up and does fuck all with his life. Yeah. Well, you can't handle it. Like, you have to work hard. You have to learn how to work hard. Yeah. Right. And, and I think that no matter what that type of, I guess, learning experience, maybe the be- best way to say it, yeah. like if everything's just not handed to you, it's important. Yes. Right. And, and I think that, that, you know, what you're saying is, is, um, very, very true, right? Like you, you work hard and then you get something. So, you know, it's always like, uh, like, like growing up for me and, and granted, my parents couldn't afford some of the things that I wanted. So our deal was always, well, we'll give this part, like for example, shoes, right? Yeah. You know that I'm really into shoes. I love yeah, shoes yeah. from a young age. And um, there was uh, like, I was in eighth eighth grade and um, there was a pair of the most expensive shoes that had ever come out at that point, $140, right? And how old were you? What's eighth grade? Like? Eighth grade. So 12? I was like, yeah, 13. Yeah, t- somewhere in there, okay. right? And so I really, really wanted these for basketball, right? Wanted them bad. And I, I don't remember if it was, my parents said they would pay like $80 of it or or something like this. Because mm. I could pick shoes that were $80, but 
but I wanted the ones that were 140 because they were a big deal, right? So like for me, I had to bring that other part of the money to the table. Mm. And then it was a big deal when we went shopping because I pulled out the cash like that I had saved and worked for to then go buy the shoes, right? And then I'll tell you what happened is those shoes stayed in the box. So I would wear them for practice and they didn't touch anything but the basketball floor. Yeah. And then I wouldn't wear them outside. I wouldn't wear them anywhere. But I took care of them because I had invested. You'd paid for them. They were my shoes. Yeah. And they were so special to me because, you know, obviously other kids didn't have those shoes. A, a lot of like, you know, it was just a big deal because that was a lot of money back then to yeah, pay yeah, for yeah. a pair of shoes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I loved them. But they were, they, I was proud of them too because they weren't just handed to me. Yeah, you right? respected them. And again, if yeah. a rich kid got bought those shoes, he'd probably be wearing them out to the park. Whatever. Running through rivers yeah. and yeah, I just wouldn't care. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah I wore uh, those and I, I literally remember wearing them because my feet got too big, of course. Yeah. Um, and so like I ripped a hole in them and I had a hole in my shoes. <laughs> and that, but that was what I had, yeah. right? Because I couldn't get more shoes, but I had bought those and my feet grew too big. But, you know, it's like, I was still proud of them. You know, because they, they meant something to me because I had to pay for them. So it's kind of like that. Like, you know, if, if you go to get a car, for example, if you want to get a car, here's your allotment. And if you want a different car, you pay the other part of it yeah, or good. something. I'll tell you what I'm doing with my son. Um, so he started his own YouTube channel. Yeah. And he, it, some of the videos have done well. Oh, man. they're yeah, great. Yeah. And, and, and he earns, I should, probably shouldn't say this, but he earns more than his teachers mm. from his YouTube channel. And I don't, I don't like, to, you know, don't like saying that because it's, it's not good for a, a 10, 11 year old kid to be earning that kind of money, but it's all going in a trust. Okay. And when he turns 18, he can only spend that on a house. That's the deal. Okay. But he's earned that money. Yeah. And I tell it, you know, I show him all the time. Like he's, he's what you've earned this month. And he's, he's eyes like, wow, Jesus. And that makes him, you ought to see him when I tell him that how much harder he works in the gym. Because he has to do that too. And yeah, 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 because I've said to him, I said, it's all right doing these videos, you know, once a week and just mincing about. I said, but people want to see results. People want to see you progress. Yeah. So he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you're benching, you know, 60 kilo now. A year from now, if you're benching 80, like that money will go up because people are, in, are drawn in and, and invested in your journey, trying to teach him that people get invested in personalities. And sure. And he's getting so good on the camera now. Like he's doing his own intros. He didn't introduce all the... All the different exercises, yeah, he yeah. does his outros, he takes the piss out of people. He's, so I'm sort of giving him a platform to earn the money. Yeah. But making yeah, yeah. sure he knows that he's earning it. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's maybe something, you know, food for thought for, for your kids at, at some point. But yeah. Making them, it really did change his, his outlook on, sure. on his training. As soon as I showed him what money he was making, he was yep. training so much harder. Well, money, I mean, at, at that at that younger age, if, if you if you can work harder and earn more, right? It, it, I remember for me, man, I was I was driven and, you know, it was more like working on the farm or whatever where you could earn money and then if you wanted something, you, you could go get it. It was your money yeah. then, you know? And, and so, I mean, being driven uh, to do better, I think is only a natural good thing. But if it's just like, hey, Eddie, you don't have to do anything. I'm just going to hand this to you. Yeah. Right. If if you were handed that, well, why would you work harder? Yeah, yeah. Right. My, you're not you're not going to want to work harder. Yeah. My so. parents never never gave me anything. If I wanted to save up for something, I'd have to work. You know, paper rounds and sell cigarettes on the playground, and you know, <laughs> cigarettes on the yeah, playground. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit of cocaine, <laughs> boy. Know. Okay, but you'd I'd have to hustle and you know hustle and figure bustle. it out. Yeah, I'd you'd have, have to, to figure, figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's no there's no uh, there was no handouts for me whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and as you say, you know, you see your pals, and you know, so I remember at seventeen, some some kid got a brand new BMW Z4. I thought you at seventeen, yeah, and I was like, you fucking bastard! I was so jealous. Yeah, so that like, proper angers you. Yeah, and then fifteen, twenty years later, he's still working a shit job. Yeah, lives in a council house, and it's like it just goes to show. Yeah, you know, well, you can. I mean, you can do whatever, and it, it's a. Um, it's an interesting thing to see like where, where um, success can come from, you know, and, and uh, I think this is uh, an interesting topic to, to delve mm. into a little bit, you know, but uh, it's, um, it's neat to, cause a lot of the people that I have been around obviously are, um, have different stories, right? Different mm. backgrounds and things they've come from. And, 
you know, it's uh, what what drives that fire to get better, constantly get better, and, and like you said, never satisfied. It's the same thing. Like, yeah, it's something I said. It's it's I'm I'm never satisfied with it. It always can be- get get better. And even coming out of you know this this like weekend with the Shaw Classic and everything, you know, there's so many parts that went wonderful mm. and went great, but in my mind, all the parts that could have got better need to get better. Yes. Right. So it's, it's like, I'm already wanting to get to work on why did those things not go correctly and what could, what can we do to execute better mm. and do better? And it's, it's that, that never satisfied type of attitude where it will get better. I know it will get better and it got better from last year and then it has to get better to next year. Right. Mm. And, and, you know, instead of resting and relaxing and saying, wow, that was good enough. That was awesome. Like, let's just do the exact same thing again. Why yeah, would, yeah. why would you ever think like that? You yeah. know? So, and, yeah, I know you, and, and, and uh, actually I've used the word quite a bit over the weekend with yourself commendable yeah. because you've invested the money back into the show and back into the athletes and you're not particularly bothered about making profit. You just want this to grow and grow and grow and grow. And let's say 15, 20 years from now, you know, that's where the profit is, where you're yeah. making X amount of millions rather than being greedy now. You know? Well, it's, it's taking care. I think it's, it's looking at it as an investment might not be the right word for it, but at the beginning, it wasn't about, it wasn't about like, Hey, we're going to start this to make money. Right. Yeah. It was more so like I even said to Carrie, when I first came with the idea, right. Cause that was 2020, everything was shut down, all this, you know, going on. And I said, Hey, like I'm talking to these guys and guys are losing sponsorship money and, and you know, they're, they're not getting the prize money they're depending on and they're all mm. pretty down. And I said, let's just do this, right. It's just a good thing to do and let's just do it. Right. Mm. So I'll take out and at that point it was just 25,000. I said, I'll put 25,000 in, we'll fly the guys in, we'll compete for that. And, and I think it'll be good. And I think, on the back end, if anything, we're going to lose money, mm. obviously, but it's going to be the right thing to do. And I think that that if you do a good thing, it'll come back around. Yeah. Right. And that's genuinely what I said to Carrie, because she's like, well, this is crazy because we're not necessarily going to get back. And I said, well, we can put it out. And I think people will, will want to watch it right now. And mm. that, that'll help out. And then, you know, I think, you know, we've at that point we had just launched, well, or had launched evolution we're just launching undefined nutrition and i was like you know what people are going to see this and i think because we're doing the right thing they're going to come back and support those companies and i think i think it'll be a good thing and i said i just i believe in it and on the number side it didn't work i just said i have this thought i think it'll work right Mm. and then it grew it grew from there but then the same thing you go back and say hey guys we're going to bump the prize money and bump and i remember all of them you know at the beginning looking at me and saying you're going to bump the prize money. I've never gone to a contest where they're bumping the prize money, mm. you know, and they were sharing it and it was growing. And it's the same thing where, you know, at least if, if it's sustainable, right. To come back, it, it will grow and get bigger. Mm. So, you know, again, we're, I mean, we're talking about, um, you know, right now, actually today, like Carrie and I figured out that we were able to cross over $250,000 in prize money. Two hundred and fifty thousand in the in the fourth year. Yeah, like and it's all just started from that that idea. But again, I I know and I understand very very well that without the athletes performing, without without you know the guys coming in and lifting the things that they do, and putting on the incredible performances, mm. nobody sits in the stands, right? Yeah. The, you it doesn't matter what piece of equipment I build or what I have out there. And mm. it, that could be a spectacle. But if you do not have the athletes to perform, people don't come. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's just the truth. That's any sport, right? Like if you didn't have athletes that were amazing at basketball, does anybody come and watch? No. Yeah, true. If nobody could make a shot. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or if nobody, if, if you didn't have, you know, people that could throw and catch a football and play the game incredibly well, do people come watch? No, they don't. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the athletes are the, the heartbeat of all of it. And as a, um, you know, athlete myself for all of these years, I haven't got that sense from pretty much anybody like within the sport of strongman that they care that much about the athletes. Like it's like you're showing up to perform 
I wouldn't say that. They just don't care as much as you, you obviously do. I mean, you told me, yeah. you're probably too humble to say this, but you, you're putting uh, was it 80% of the profits back to the athlete. Thereabouts, I mean, if you, if you were to look at the backside, and this is the part that you don't, that I don't even think about, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, whatever, but like, you know, our team collectively, how much work and time we put into oh, yeah, the geez. event, yeah. it's, it's actually being pulled from our other business. Yeah. Right. So, so much time is dedicated just to the Shaw Classic weekend, but none of that is part of the books. Yeah. there right so it is more than that it's probably actually more than that um going in and if you were to factor that it's probably Close in a way 90 100 yeah. yeah a wash but again mm -hmm. it's doing the right thing right so okay maybe maybe it's well i i don't know man i, I, I like people, caring about the caring about the athletes people get invested in that you, yeah. you, you're very attentive to detail you're very caring about the athletes and people get invested in that and i think uh, and I think you know this, but, you know, you might just about break even, make a little bit of profit on these shows, but you look at the bigger picture of, like, what's going to be the knock-on effect of this, of, yeah. like, undefined nutrition sure. and evolution. And that yeah. those is that, that that sort of revenue is where the whole thing builds. Yeah. So I think, you, you know, you're doing everything right, and, and I say, it's commendable, Brian. It's the only word I can think of to yeah. sort of put a, put a, a word on it. It's just commendable. You're well, just it's, giving it's, back to everybody. It's just from from where I started out, man, you know, that I think that's probably why why I feel so strongly about about all of this mm. is from where I started. Yeah. Right. It's where I started, where I got into the sport of strongman and where things were when I started. And and most of the guys, um, I mean, even even, you know, even for you to some extent, like coming in at like two thousand. 12 was your yeah, yeah you know something in there like i had already done it for at that point i guess close to seven years like before you're coming in and it's i went through a lot like in in those times that that people don't realize i don't think you know and so it already started to kind of blossom and grow a little bit more and mm. and um, you know things have have moved on you know from there but it was it was my thought process that, that there had been so many men that had come before me and then I'm coming in mm. and then there's going to, obviously there's going to be men that come after me too. Right. So it, it, you're just part of the, you're part of the progression, but you know, I had how many conversations, man, over the past, I mean, I guess at this point, close to 20 years, 15, 20 years where, you know, the athletes on the backside are talking about what's wrong and what could be changed and what could be better. And you know, that those conversations are numerous mm. numerous i mean all, so many contests you're leaving you're like well what about this what about that and where where are the athletes why are the athletes not being taken care of and there's no union there there's no representation there there's no um you know stuff on the backside where you're leaving and saying wow they really really care about me being here and they're so happy that i'm here and i'm performing right mm -hmm. you don't leave with that sense and that's that's i think at the at the soul of all of this I want every one of the the athletes that come in to perform to leave and feel like, wow, mm. they were so happy that I was here and I'm so thankful. You know, it's it's just why, like, for example, after the contest, what we do is we keep the guys for another day, Yeah, which does it cost more money? Yes, it costs more money, right? You, you're keeping all these big guys, you're feeding them, you're mm. doing these fun things with them and, and, and whatever, but... That's just one extension of a thank you yeah. to them. That's not that's not part of the prize money. That's not mm -hmm. part of any of it, right? Like it's just like, hey guys, you know what? We appreciate everything you have done. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep you for an extra day. We're gonna plan a day of fun so you can relax, you can enjoy each other. It's the post contest, so your stress is all gone. You don't need to be worried about anything competing wise. Just unwind you know what yeah. i'm saying have a good time and that's just it's just one little thing mm. that is so important to me to be able to do that but again i think i think at the heartbeat of it all or or heart of it all i should say not heartbeat but the heart heartbeat really is my uh what what i've gone through mm. right what i've gone through and and my love my love for the sport and and obviously what it has done for me 
what I've given back to it, what it's given to me. But it's like, if, if I can step in and do something right, it's, it's only going to be positive for the athletes. Right. So, you know, I don't, I I've thought about at times or had conversations about, you know, starting some type of athlete union. The problem with that is it would be so incredibly difficult to do that. Jeez, yeah. And I don't know that everybody, everybody would be on board. So all of these ideas, all of my thought processes that I've had, the best way to take action on them is to apply them myself. And that's, that's just gen, genuinely the truth because I can only, only do what I can, can do, but if it's within my world, I can control it. Yeah. Right. And outside of that, I can't, and I, and I'm fine with that. Mm. So, you know, at, at the heart of, of all of this, I think, you know, people can have their opinion and they're certainly entitled to their opinion of, you know, what's the best or what's this or what's that? Like in my mind, all I'm trying to do is run the best strongman contest I possibly can. And outside of that, I don't care. Yeah. Right. And, and so, you know, everybody can have their opinion, but if we, as in Carrie and I, our team, everybody that comes in to help, whatever, if we execute and do the best that we possibly can, that's what I want to do Yeah. within the strongman world. Right. And then you know, if other contests want to take notice, they can, if they don't, they don't have to, I'm not going to tell them what to do or how to run their ship or do anything. Yeah. Right. So it's just, you know, the history that we have brought in and you know, what, what the growth that the, the Shaw classic weekend has have now being able to give away the strongest man on earth title, which came from Paul Ohl, who, you know, had started and run Fortissimus. There's, there's just a lot of history there that I'm very proud of. And, and we're only writing more chapters in history, yeah. right? But that history doesn't have to change any of the other history. Yeah, It doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that so quickly people want to say, well, you know, this or that, or it's got to be this or it's got to be that. Not necessarily, man. All we can do is control what we can do. And that's all I want to do. And I think that it's just all of these ideas that I have had throughout my entire career, all the conversations I've had throughout my entire career, it's just doing something about it and doing it in the right way. And if, if that um, is something people like, then cool, man, let's keep, let's keep rocking. And if some, if it's something people don't like, then that's fine too. Like Mm -hmm. you don't have to like it. I'm not telling you that this should be how everything is done. It's just how I want to do it, how I see it as correct. And that's the, you know, the format um, of the contest, the events of the contest, the number of athletes in the Mm. contest, the way things are done from a judging standpoint, like everything. Mm. I just want it to be the best we possibly can for this contest. And, and, And I think that, you know, if you look at the growth from year one to year four, it obviously speaks volumes. Right. And, and, you know, I could, uh, very easily, or we could very easily say, Hey, the prize money is stopping at this. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're going to get to, um, instead of those bigger numbers, we're going to keep it lower and we're going to run the contest and do all this stuff. And that's where it's going to stop. And everything else is now we're going to line our pockets. We're going to line our pockets, but I just don't think that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I think if you do good and, and you give back and you push it that way, there's probably a lot of other business people out there that would say to me, that's very stupid, mm-hmm. right? Why are you doing that? Because these guys will come compete for less money. Mm-hmm. And by and large, within the sport of strongman, that has been the attitude for a very long time, that the guys will compete for less money, so yeah, don't yeah. pay them more. But I just don't agree with that because without the athletes, you have nothing. So I want to pay them more. Mm-hmm. And again, that's just what I want to do. And it's okay if other people don't want to do that. I'm not saying anybody has to. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think the, the, the sport in, in a whole has got a long way to go. I agree. I, think, I agree. You know, I think back to when I started Strongman, I was doing uh, Strongman on pub car parks for no prize money. You know, I won England's Strongest Man and I got a, a 20 pound trophy. Mm. You know, it, that, and that's the truth. Um, and, and you get into the, the sort of the arena shows. And even then, you know, back then, you, you're talking, I don't know, maybe I'm pulling things out about my arse here, but 3000 for a win. Yeah. You know, and when you're trying to make a living, it was it was hard. It was hard. Um, and it's it's progressed. You know, yeah. it's progressed. I think, uh, is it Giants Live do 25 for first? Or, you know, it's really progressed. Yeah, yeah. What it was. It's, it's still got a long way to go. 
I think. You know, it's still got a, a lot a lot of growth to go. Um but like you say, it's it's I mean, I left the sport. I was as I say, I, I think two thousand sixteen Britain's strongest man was three thousand five hundred. Yeah. Pounds or something, sure. uh, and I only did my nationals and, and worlds. Really, I wasn't really interested in in anything else. I mean, obviously, I did a, you know a great setup with Giants Live and the deadlift, and you know we, we all made some fantastic money out of that. But I guess I, I took a lot of that into my own my own like my own bubble. Really, you know, like the prize money for the five hundred kilo I brought to the table. Yes, yep. You, you know? pushed the envelope with that. Yeah, I brought yeah. the prize money to the to the you know I think the thought of Giving yeah, that kind of money away for a, for a 500 kilo deadlift was quite hard to stomach for for Giants Live at the time, you know. Yeah, um, it just wasn't as progressed as it was now. So yeah, bring you know bringing stuff to the table and as I say, as I got out of the sport, that's when it really sort the prize money's really come up in those aspects. I think yeah. I think Giants Live is now 25. I don't know what the total prize pool is, but it's a lot, lot, yeah, lot better than it was. Um, but yeah, in general, like you're doing now, this is. I say it's just commendable, Brian, and not everyone's got this business mindset of the few. You know, you're giving yourself very as a business model. It's it's fucking terrible. Yeah. Well, and you but know, that, you're giving back ninety percent of your it's profits key, to it, prize money. Yeah, and, and as more money comes in, it, it would be a very natural thing to say, "Well, hey, I've already given the first three years. Now let's mm. fourth year, let's take it in." But I, I, I very much think we're still scratching the surface of where we can go. It can you know? grow and grow. So, I mean, grow, it's yeah. like you're looking at, like, this is just a prize money right now. And all my prize money goes back to the contest, right? Yeah, yeah. So, as it worked out, it was $251,925 uh-huh. is what the prize money total. So, first place prize money for me would have been $95,983.42. Uh, Right, so yeah, all yeah. of that goes back in to the the prize pot because I'm not. Yeah, take, yeah, yeah. I've said from the start I'm not going to take a dime, and I haven't the first three years. I'm not going to now. Yeah, man. Right. So, but second place is um, Mitch Hooper of forty three thousand seventy nine dollars. Wow, fifth, for second place. Second, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's second place. Third place was still twenty seven, almost twenty eight thousand, twenty seven thousand wow, nine hundred. Yeah, so in, insane. Numbers. You know, you're going down. I mean, even even um, in this model here. You know, sixth place is still over ten thousand yeah. dollars. You know, so and you're you're getting paid, you're getting paid well. Yeah, for coming I, I to didn't compete. have that platform when I was competing, man. No. You know, I think even Arnold's was fifty, forty five, fifty thousand. Yep. Uh, World strongest man first place forty five. Forty five. Yeah. Forty five thousand. Yep. So it's, so it's Jesus, and it has yeah. progressed. And I mean, you look at uh, you know the one contest I think that's really really pushed the envelope is the Rogue Invitational. Yeah, um, and well, they that, they put massive, a, yeah. they put a lot of money. And I don't know what their total is, but I know that first place I think last year was one hundred and fifteen or one hundred and seventeen yeah, something yeah. that uh, Novikov got for winning that. That's great. For so that would be yeah. I think that was the biggest uh, biggest first place prize ever. So. Yeah. You know, to be able to at least be in that realm, and again, we have more competitors um, here, but, you know, it's, it's it's awesome, man. And what they're doing, you know, again, like that that pushing that envelope, it's like to go to a strongman contest and perform and make $100,000, right? So now, and, and, you know, my goal obviously would be able to push that, what that 95 is over 100 you know, coming up. Mm. So you're coming, but it's that's six figures for one weekend. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know, the guys now have that opportunity. So it's it's really, really awesome, man. It makes me it makes me so proud, um, you know, to be able to say that and be able to have those type of numbers in our fourth year. But again, I think the the on the back side it's it's like you keep putting it back in man and i i think it's going to keep following that trend where it's going to keep growing yeah you know and um you know for us it's it's uh just a mentality i think that you bring to the table and again it's it's not with this it's it's it started you know from a place of love and passion and i think as long as as you keep bringing that to the table people see that they'll keep coming and again it's it's going to naturally kind of blossom mm. and grow and um i think it's only going to be good man and i think that that you know the the further that the further that we can we can kind of you know push that forward within the sport i think it'll only gain more and more and more popularity mm. and the, the the obviously the competitors are going to get more opportunities as well on the back side of that so 
We'll see. I mean, it, it, it's hard to say like, hey, the future is exactly going to hold this yeah. or hold that. Um, but it's been neat, man. And I think that, you know, now uh, for me with, with being done, it's, it's just going to be from, from the backside. But, you know, it's just, just like I said to all the guys, man, I love all the guys. I appreciate all of them. I know what hard work they have to do mm-hmm. to be there. And, and, and that's, a, that's a respect that I will never lose. Right. So coming from the standpoint of I know how much hard work I have to put in, if they have to put that in, too, I'm not going to lose that and I won't lose that mentality. So it, like to me, they're always still going to be that where if they don't show up and perform and they don't lift, people don't want to come. Yeah. Right. And and that's the truth. And and so it's never about it because, um, you know, for me, if I did take a let's just say a, a more look at it from a business standpoint and numbers and saying, well, okay, we're putting in all this hard work. I'm going to take care of myself first. And then the guys are going to come last. That's, I just, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't be okay with that, you know? And, it, and in all fairness, I think that people would see that. I think people would see that as how I feel, you know? So I think the guys see that they know how much they're, they're loved and appreciated and they're mm. going to keep coming back. And I think that, um, it's naturally going to move things forward is what I hope. And, uh, you know, I think that if, if the first three years for four years now show that, I think it's only going to keep growing. What was the so. prize money your first year in total? So we went from, I said I would put in 25 and then I, I told the guys like, you know, Hey, if you share it and push yeah, it, yeah, like yeah. it'll, it'll go up. And I think we ended up at 50, 55 as a total for everybody. Total. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So and that was only that first year was 10 more than quadrupled. Yeah, so this is now four. now five, almost five times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty, if it was yeah, fifty-five, yeah. you know, to yeah. two hundred and fifty. So, I mean, we'll see, man. I, I I would love to push that up more. You know, I mean, just as you said with business, I'm the same thing here. It's like if we can get to that, why can we not get to a lot more? You know, well, I mean, you think so. about it, Brian. If this keeps growing the way it is by year twenty, the first place could be getting a million. How cool would that be? It'd be insane. That would be amazing. Man. And and yeah. that's how it should be. Yeah. You know, you, you want to be the pinnacle yeah. of your sport. You you know, you're putting your life on the line. Sure. You want to get rewarded for it. And, yeah. and sports do. You look at football. Yeah. You look at basketball. You look at darts. Yeah. People play darts and make millions. Well, the, neat, the neat part is to have those people come to the event that are fans mm. that have been to football games or basketball games or soccer or whatever. And they come to this and they are just blown away yeah. by watching it in person. Mm. And they, they say, I had such a good time watching. And they've just never seen that type of strength in front of them. Yeah. The spectacle, right? They see the spectacle and they want to come back. And then, you know, for so many kids that have come or families or whatever. And it's like, this is crazy. Like they mm. want to watch and then they want to come back. And so I think the the more that we can grow uh, and progress, the the more that, that it will naturally progress that because more and more people will want to come because there's nothing like it. Yeah. In my mind, there's nothing like it. And, um, you know, at least, you know, here in America for sure, this is the, um, you know, this is the arena show where, Everybody can come. Everybody has an awesome seat. Everybody's right on top of the action. They can feel the environment. And just being in that room, mm. I mean, as an athlete, it's one thing. Other people, it's like, you know, just the goosebumps, man. Yeah. It's, it's it's so cool. So I want more people to experience it. I think, you know, again, we will see where it goes, but it's just kind of like that natural progression. And I think that that, like, even just sitting here talking with you about this and where it could go makes me my competitive juices flow more just because I want it to be better Mm. for no other reason. Right. And that's, like I said, it's just my goal genuinely at the, at the, at the end of this is to run the best strongman contest I possibly can. Right. And you're doing that. And that's, that's all I want to do. You know, and I think that that's okay because there's room, there's room in the calendar for that. Mm. And I don't want any of the guys to not go compete in other contests. I don't, that's not, the mission or the goal here, right? Mm. And I think the goal is to give them an opportunity to come here and do this, mm. right? And if, if um, you know, if the standard goes up with what we're doing, then that's totally fine with me too, right? 
I'm all right, right with that because who's going to win? The athletes are going to win. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I'm all right with that, man. So, um, we'll see what the future holds, buddy. Yeah. yeah we just talked an hour solid about money and <laughs> did we? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's interesting though, man. The, 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 the all different aspects of it with the kids and the athletes and yeah, it's massive. Yeah. You're, you're doing great things, Brian. You're yeah. doing great things. It's the first time I've come to the Shaw Classic. And I didn't really know what to expect. I was, you know, you sort of half expect a shitty arena and, you know, a few stalls. <laughs> did, and, did you? Yeah, you just don't know. You know, you see snippets, but you just don't know. And you turn up and it's very professional, mate. I'm you know, super proud of you, man. You've done a fantastic job. Attention to detail, really. You're building something. You're building a legacy here. You really are. Something mm -hmm. that'll go on and go on and go on. It's, you know, a bit like the Arnold Classic. It's literally on that. It's on that. Put it on that level, mate. And yeah, why? Why can't it go to that level? Sure, you know why can't it go to that level where there's quarter of a million people turning up to to watch? That would be a, a incredible, man. The strongman. I mean, Arnold's Arnold's very open. He says the strongman's the biggest draw at the Arnold's. Yeah, you know, and he's built that platform, and you're doing the same. Yeah, you know? people. Well, it's it's fun to watch, man. And I think um, the more people that experience it, the better, man. It's it's a fun uh, fun thing, and. You know, people can take take parts of it away that aren't even necessarily in competing in or have aspirations to compete in strongman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just uh, like, hey, this is a spectacle of strength, and yeah. it's very motivating. The in the the environment's very positive. So we're gonna keep rocking, man. But we'll see what the future holds. Um, I think that uh, you know, probably probably we should get together more. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, as much as I can tolerate you. Of course, it's where we slept in the same bed last night, Brian. You can tolerate me loads. Okay. Why are you telling people that? It would be nice for people to know. <laughs> Sleep together now and again. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, I appreciate you coming on. It's always fun to chat uh, with you. It is. Yep. I, I like chatting with me as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's good fun. Do you just sit in the mirror and talk talk to yourself? Oh, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Just because you, you enjoy it that it's much. It's quite rewarding. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Make Perfect. myself laugh. Awesome, awesome. Well, if you guys enjoyed uh, this podcast, please share it uh, and help us get it out to more people. But uh, obviously, you guys can find Eddie. You want to follow his, uh, his journey, shenanigans, any of the above. You can definitely do that. But... Uh, Appreciate all of you. Love all of you. Hope you're doing well. For now, go out and be great, and we'll check you guys later.